This is the new F-150 Lightning. And we're gonna skip the walk around and the quirks and features for later. We're gonna jump right in this thing, go down the road and see how it feels. Let's start this thing up. No, that's auxiliary, turn it on. No, it's, I, I hit the button, it's on. It's not on, I can't, that's it. I can't hear anything. Ah, it's in sport mode. That's not yeah. sport mode, I can't hear anything. Rev the engine. Hey, well look, I'm revving it. What? It's got nothing, man. So yeah, we really are in this vehicle with the engine on, and all I can hear is the AC fan. It's crazy. There's literally no other noise right now. I think the best thing that we could do to start this whole thing out is just go do a zero to 60 pull right in front of the Ford dealership. Let's see what it'll do, because we also have a way to get those numbers. Yep. With our draggy device. It's just so. a little box that sits up here. We'll put it right up here. And then when we take off, it'll measure that from that box, put it down into Sam's phone in an app, and we'll know exactly how fast this thing goes. Now this is the standard lightning, so it doesn't have that high output battery, so it's the slower of the two new lightnings, but we're told it's pretty doggone quick. All right, you here we ready? go. You ready for let's this? Do, let's do it. Brake target, oh my gosh! You just barked them. Whoa! Wow. <laughs> okay. That was uh, pretty good. <laughs> That's surprising. That's um. That's shocking. Four point five four seconds. <laughs> um, with a one foot rollout, as most devices uh, would measure this, if you were to drag strip, that would be four point three one <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Um, that's insane. Let's yeah. do it again. No, let's do it again. <laughs> it barked the heck out of him. Holy cow. Wow. And it doesn't make any noise when it does that. All you heard was a tire chirp and the wind start blowing. <laughs> that's amazing. Guys, I'm sorry I'm laughing so much, but like if you don't watch our channel for like our other normal videos, we're gearheads. We both have supercharged F-150s. His is 775 horsepower. Mine's like a thousand at the crank. That right there is quick. And it's a much different experience than when you take off in an internal combustion, you know, regular gas vehicle. That's crazy. Well, that number would be a little bit faster if we didn't have an extra sack of 260 pounds over there in the passenger seat. <laughs> We've got 214 miles of range and I've reset the trip computer. So we're going to see how much our range drops versus how many miles we drive. I've heard once you give it a lot of gas. No, it's not gas, Sam. Pedal. No, once you give it a lot of pedal, that range drops faster than it should. But if you drive like a regular human being should drive, that that is very accurate and uh, I just want to see how much it changes with our driving habits. While we have this lightning, we are going to line it up and race zero to 60 against Sam 775 horsepower supercharged 2021 F-150 with all this kind of tricked out stuff done to it. It's the pinnacle of F-150 performance right now, way bigger than the Raptor and all that other stuff. Of course, that is aftermarket add-on. We're going to line them up and race. We're also going to do on the interstate a 40 to 80 roll race. We'll be going 40, zip up to 80. You're going to want to see that video when this one's over. I'll put it in the end card to this video as soon as it's out and down in the description. So we're about five miles out from the dealership now. We're just trying to get a feel for what this actually is like going down the road. The overall comfort level, in my opinion, it seems to be maybe a little more cush, but you've got big old, you know, 33 inch ridge grappler tires and these are a smaller passenger yeah. tire. My first impressions is, is this drives like an F-150, but better. Yep. Um, you know, that weight being lower, makes you know your your center of gravity and everything much much lower than a regular vehicle or a regular f-150 um both yeah I so mean, the weight oh wow he just punched it a little bit you can really point this thing where you <laughs> want it to go and it will just go there and we're uh, coming up in a big curve here oh I mean, wow he punched it oh I mean, <laughs> you know the brakes need to work good in this thing because it's deceptive how fast you're actually going yep you don't have that feedback like you normally do with gears changing and exhaust you can't and, hear anything telling you you're going fast nothing tells you you're going fast except for your brain that is your vision. it's in your vision and it's like deceptive 
at how fast you're actually going. That's the weirdest, and you've heard that on probably other review videos and definitely from people who have had a Tesla. Like, It's almost like your brain has ridden in an internal combustion engine vehicle for all of its life, and all of a sudden you put it in a spaceship. That's kind of the difference of how this actually feels. It's crazy. The transmission, or lack thereof in this thing. Single speed. You know, it's all relative to the gas pedal. And when you let off the gas pedal, it slows down more than a regular vehicle does because it's using that brake assist to charge. But not having gears is hard on your mind if you've never driven an electric vehicle. There's uh, no point of reference. Like the Nissan put out a CVT, continuous variable transmission. Yeah. His wife drives that in an Infiniti SUV. Yeah. And you know they've they've had out multiple iterations of that. When they first come out with those, it was much a driving process was much like this. There's just no gear changes, and it was all linear. And people didn't like that, so they tuned those transmissions to where you have a fake on, gear on, change in it. I mean, when you first drive an electric vehicle, it's gonna be a completely different experience. It's much like driving an electric golf cart. Um, when you give it gas, it goes When you quickly. give it pedal, when you give it you give electricity. It and I, yeah, when you give gas. it electricity. <laughs> There's no gas. Um, <laughs> and, and then the, the, the braking working the opposite direction. It's a different experience, guys. I'll have to be 110% transparent here. I wasn't excited about this truck. We actually have one ordered for our channel. I wasn't excited about, I'm not excited necessarily about electric. I wasn't excited about this truck per se. But after that first pull in this thing, I know there's not potential to, you know, add extra this and extra that and go even faster. But right out of the box, the standard truck is ridiculously quick. That's amazing. I can't wait till we get our hands on the fast one because. Yeah, I mean, this is very goodness. fast for a truck, <laughs> period. Yeah. The faster one is going to be ridiculous Pro and possibly quite possibly faster than my supercharged truck with 800 horsepower so i mean it and it's heavier and this weighs a thousand pounds more before you it's get amazing. to the high performance one yeah it's crazy i've got an idea man look at this button right here that so, says traction control so on a regular f-150 if you turn that off when you give it the beans on the zero to 60 pull you get a better time because it doesn't pull power. So how does that work on an electric vehicle? Let's find out. So the process is you can hit it once here and it'll say traction control off. But then if we hold that button down, this little bar comes across until it goes all the way. The advanced track off. Advanced track off is the party button. And we're gonna, we've got the draggy hook back up. So we're gonna see what we can do with yeah. no Let's traction see control. If it, just sits and spins and I gotta let out cause you know, I'm gonna be nice to the tires and, and everything. Or let's see if it's faster. What do you guys think? This standard model has 426 horsepower and 775 foot pounds of torque. The bigger battery has 563 horsepower, but still the same 775 pounds of torque. That torque guys is hitting like a freight train. Let's Traction see. control off. spin any more than it normally does. Uh, it didn't just bark all over the place. We'll see what the number is though. That one was 4.6 seconds. So right in that same, you know, four and a half second area. So it didn't really change anything. I guess that's just more uh, when it's wet, that's gonna keep you a little bit safer. Doesn't really improve performance on an electric vehicle where it's pulling timing and everything over on your combustion engine. All right, I'm behind the wheel. We're gonna hit this curvy back road. And I can already tell you like the, the power, the full, the pull of this thing, like the difference in horsepower and torque. A lot of horsepower can take you down a drag strip really fast. A lot of torque can get you moving quickly. My initial opinion is, is I'm gonna stomp it here. This thing, hey gum it, it chirped them from like 40 to 60. It chirped them from 40 miles an hour. It will get you moving quickly. I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, these curves are pretty wicked and it's not having any trouble and you come out of them like a bat out of you know where um as soon as you get through the curve it's it's pretty wicked and snappy this thing is snappy would be the word i would put on this i would say this thing has more power than it needs by far <laughs> yes. for a truck i mean 
I, my, I, and that's a guy that has a truck that has way more power than it needs. Um, the average guy buying this, <laughs> it, it's gonna be too much power. Electric cars in general, just, they have a lot of power. Let's, let's call it what it is. And, and for the average driver, it's usually too much. You see a lot of uh, bad wrecks in Teslas. And uh, I think you're gonna see that in this as well. People were jumping hills in Vegas, like in uh, San Francisco or LA or something like they were jumping hills in town. Like you can't do that in a normal car very easily, but I'm gonna tell you this right now. If I had a fleet for uh, AC repair or electric or something, there's no way in heck that I would buy this for 50 guys to go drive around in to do work without being able to detune it down to where it won't do this. Oh my gosh. Wow. Like, it's you insane. Can, you can get in trouble very easy. If, you don't, if you're a bad driver to begin <laughs> with, with poor driving skills. Gah! This thing lifted up off the ground. <laughs> oh, I think, the, I think the front tires Ooh. lifted up off the ground. This wow. is crazy. I guess what I'm trying to convey to you guys is this truck has too much power <laughs> for the average driver. <laughs> Um, electric I would not vehicle. put my wife in this. There's no way. Brad is 100% right on that. Um, fleet vehicles, this is the same power level as the fleet vehicles are going to have. You are going to have a bunch of guys get fired for <laughs> wrecking these and racing these. And, I mean, uh, could you imagine getting this no. handed to you and, you know, you've got 15 guys that work for you. They're plumbers. <laughs> Five of them are going to get fired. Yeah. I, I mean, one this is one of them's going to die. This is too much fun <laughs> for that. I mean, and it doesn't get old. So for guys, my wife probably wouldn't get in this and punch it. But like, I'm trying to slow down and let the car in front of me get out far enough for me mm -hmm. to be able to punch it again. And I'm going to do that all the entire time that we're driving this. I can't wait to go race this thing and see how it will do against Sam's truck because I think even at this lower power level. It's going to give it a run for its money, and he has the ultimate vehicle. So we've been like nine and a half miles, and we've only used like nine or ten miles. No, we've used nine, yeah, nine and a half miles. So, so yeah. I mean, we've been driving this thing like complete morons, and we've only used the amount of miles and range that it said we would at this point. That's insane because we've been lighting them up every chance we get. So we're getting up to speed on the interstate now, highway, whatever you want to call it, the place where you can drive the fastest legally. And I will say, after hitting those curves as hard as I possibly could and raising cane a little bit that we didn't put on camera, with this weight being so much lower, and we're gonna get out and show you on the belt line where almost all the weight is, it feels like you can drive this closer to like a Mustang GT than it does a traditional F-150. I wasn't expecting that. I've always heard that about Teslas, but this thing feels very planted. I would not in any way drive my truck this fast. Sam might drive his truck this fast through some of these curves, but this thing sets down and goes. It, it grips the road great. I'm going over some like bridge connections right here, and the level of bounce you get out of this with the independent rear suspension, I think this is the first true IRS that you get in the rear of an F-150 ever. The new Raptor does have a five link, but it does have a solid rear axle. So a little bit different there. Guys, I'm. I'm not going to tell you how fast I'm going, but I am absolutely flying. And this thing's just cutting through the air like butter, and it does not feel like I'm going this fast. If I had this vehicle, I would get a lot of tickets just because there's no noise other than a little bit of wind. You're going to hear people complain, oh, I hear lots of wind noise, because you don't hear anything else. These mirrors are catching the same amount of wind as they would in any other F-150, except for I'm doing substantially a higher speed than that, so maybe they're catching a little more. But other than like I'm punching it on the interstate. Guys, this thing is, hmm. That's smooth. I can't wait till they get this to five or 600 miles of range because I can absolutely see owning, driving long-term one of these trucks. And, and I look forward to seeing the progression Ford makes for how these get better and better. And obviously Ford pushes Chevy, Chevy pushes Dodge. Um, this is not a bad future. And I was not expecting to say that. Big shout out to Ted Russell Ford on Parkside Drive in Knoxville, Tennessee. Awesome people. They take excellent care of us. Service department's awesome. They allowed us to use this today and we've used tons of other vehicles from them in our videos. So we're very appreciative. Go by and tell them Backroad Driver sent you. We've been getting the same uh, 
range, I guess, we can't call it mileage, or I guess it is mileage, but like we've been getting the actual mileage that we're supposed to, giving it heck, and I just did, I don't know, it's triple digits on the interstate, and we're still on that same track, and we're in sport mode the whole time, so I, I can't imagine how good you would yeah. have this if you were driving it in eco mode and taking it easy. It's just amazing how the range on this hasn't been affected, even though we've been driving we've been hooning it crazy. we've yeah. kind of been hooning yeah. it and we're not even racing yet so we went through the screens here and this does have one pedal drive and so we've turned that on you know one pedal drive is more of an off-road feature um, unless you, know, you have regenerative braking broncos have that so they can go down a trail and you're not working the brake pedal and the gas trying to get over rough rocks or logs and everything it kind of makes things a little easier but in an electric vehicle you don't really use the brake pedal when you use that, do you? What's it, this? I'm going 33 miles an hour and I'm going to let off. And it actually feels like you have the brakes on, but it's not. It's recharging at a higher rate than it normally would. Yep. Um, you know, I don't know if I could get used to that on a daily basis, but if you did. If I were in stop and go traffic, I would absolutely use that yeah. all the time. Like if my commute was 30 minutes of just stop and go, stop and go, I'd say you, man, it, it really knocks the wind out of the power there. Like I'm gonna come up to this stop, I let off and it just kills it and it will take it all the way down to zero. It does take it right to it a stop. Stops regenerating, but I actually saves some power there. So I could see doing that on a daily drive uh, when I'm not trying to do spirited driving and save a little mileage and I mean it's a little weird but it's crazy that yeah. it has it I don't think many people are going to use this for off-roading the clearance is only like eight or I think it's nine inches on the truck so I don't think this, this is isn't gonna be an, an off-road off truck yeah this isn't an off-road juggernaut but it is interesting that it has that feature so most of these reviews start with the frunk when they're doing their walk around we're gonna do something a little bit different um, they say you can put up to 400 pounds in here. I don't quite weigh that, but got a little button down here. What's cool is you hit that button, automatically goes up, takes just a second. Everybody's been griping about that, but I mean, come on. It goes up by itself. Same button lowers it, um, so you don't have like, you don't have to pull it down yourself. Uh, there is a, like an emergency get out of front free card right here, and there is a light in here. So what I'm gonna do is climb in here. Oh my shin. Oh, let's see if we can close the really front fit? down. I think I'll fit. Can big guy fit in here? You can see he's above this seal unless he tucks. So can he be stuffed in here and still be able to get out? I right. think he can, but all right. So let's see if, does he fit? <laughs> First time ever. Well, it does shut. And uh, I can hear him in there, I think. Help! Help! <laughs> can he get out on his own? Looks like he can. <laughs> hey, how was that? So the top right here is gonna be tight if you've got like a six foot male in the 260 range i'm trying to lose weight you've got a little bit of extra knee room up here in the front so maybe you could get like a little taller guy if he was skinny and didn't have real wide hips mm. but that's kind of neat because you can always you know number one car of the mafia was always like the lincoln continental or the crown vic because you could get so many bodies in it you got a whole bed back there you could put bodies in but if you got an extra one you put them right up here in the front in all seriousness, you do have um, four regular plug-in outlets, plus you could charge any kind of phone or mobile device. That's crazy, because that's up front. They've also got some of that stuff in the bed in the back. Um, you've got your regular battery right here, so if you were actually gonna charge um, somebody else's car up and boost it off, that's what you would use right there. You do have a couple anchor points and then you can put a net up right here or a net back there. And um, you flip this up, this will actually, I think, I don't want, yeah. When you flip this up, it will actually go here into this little setting, or you could even slide it forward and get it into multiple different settings to be able to divide this part of the frunk up. This is your charger, and it, the, the lower 
standard battery comes with a small charger if you get the bigger battery we'll talk about that more in a minute but it actually comes with the big fast charger so, yeah, i'll dive into that feature more here in just a second when you look down in here you could actually fill this up with ice and six packs of coke Cokes and, and then you'd be able to drain this out the bottom when you got done tailgating so i would say as far as tailgate tailgating coolness this thing gets like a bunch of thumbs up this frunk is easily the biggest game changer when it comes to functionality and trucks um, you know a bed is okay it's hard to hold, keep things from sliding to the back and sliding all over on you with this it's just as easy as having a lift gate on like a small SUV. Very functional, easy to get to. You even got little bag holders for the grocery store. You put yeah. your bag in here and you hook the hook around here. If you have to run and grab one bag of something, stick it in there and you don't have to worry about it slinging everywhere. They've thought of almost everything. And um, this is one of the coolest features on the new Lightning by far. So right here is your charging port and that's gonna be on the driver's side only. This is not a real door on the other side, just a badge. So this is your charging port. You've got a lot of options here. Um, you can actually charge another vehicle with this. Say you've got a Mach-E or a Tesla or another F-150. One of the big uses I see for that is like AAA, if they have one of these on the fleet, your electric vehicle runs out of juice, they can pull up in this, give you enough battery to get to another charger and then you know move on down the road and with this vehicle you also gain the functionality of being able to hook this up to your house and run your complete house and that's a like almost four thousand dollar option on this base model if you get the upgraded battery that's going to come standard so you're going to gain around a four thousand dollar option with that upgraded battery and i know that thing's 10 12 grand so you know it's not all just performance and range it's also got that functionality where you can run your house off of this in an emergency we brought our handy dandy creeper today because i'm going to slide up under this bad boy there's not a lot of space here okay and i'm a thick guy thick boy but there's no exhaust to get burned on up at the front what i wanted to show you guys is you can actually um, take out supposedly eight bolts under here and be able to drop the battery out. Now, if you have a new Tesla Model Y and you have like a really bad accident, that battery is actually built into the frame and you're gonna have major problems, probably be totaled out a whole lot easier. But if even like some say a, a cell dies in your F-150 Lightning battery, uh, you got this giant skid plate, which is what you're looking at right now. The battery's up underneath that. But let's say that you puncture through that and you damage one cell. You're gonna be able to get in there and repair a cell. This is the battery right here. And that goes all the way up front. But you're gonna be able to drop that and actually work on the battery. And that's something new as far as batteries go. This is like a, a bolt-on piece that, I mean, it's got cooling and it's got heat running through it to be able to bring it up to temp or drop the temp down but you're actually gonna be able to get that out and work on it, which is different than most vehicles. The other thing is this crazy suspension. Look at this control arm that drops down right here. Um, definitely different than your big leaf spring suspensions from all other F-150s outside of the new Raptor. So a lot different underneath on this thing. Here's a better view of this rear suspension. You can see that axle going out right there. It's a tough axle to be able to put this kind of power down. And then this big coil over right here so there's your motor that drives this whole rear axle so it's kind of simple there's not a whole lot going on in a electric powered uh, lightning let's talk about some of the things that are almost identical to your standard f-150 the first thing is is let's look at this thing it's an f-150 you're not gonna mistake this for some other crazy vehicle you, yes you do have this pretty neat lighting package and the grill is a little bit different the overall profile of this thing is f-150 this thing doesn't stand out like a cyber truck or a rivian it's all f-150 we're back here at the business end of the truck and you're going to have your standard towing your seven pin um, all your standard features a regular bumper regular tailgate some of these are the upper end but this is more your standard on an xlt this is just like any regular truck. The bed is the same. Uh, you do have Pro Power on board as a standard option on these, I believe. 
some of these are going to have a whole lot more power this is just a 20 amp outlet you can upgrade this thing to where you can power the whole job site or your house but as far as functionality back here this is the same as any other f-150 inside this is an f-150 not a whole lot different one thing that is cool this 12 inch screen is standard even on the base models you've got an even larger screen on the um, upper trim levels um, but otherwise i mean you've got some of the same features as all the other trucks you've got your work surface right here this has been handy in my truck um, all of the trim bits um, everything in here is standard f-150 there's really no way to tell that you're an electric vehicle except you don't hear anything when you hit the start button availability how hard is it to get the new f-150 lightning it's bad i'm just going to be honest with you guys if you've already ordered one it's bad it's going to be probably a year or two before you get one if you haven't ordered one yet put an order in it doesn't hurt to put an order in and not get it when it actually comes like put an order in because by two or three years from now when you could actually get one it's too late to order one and get one in six months so the truck's sick if you've got to upgrade in a couple years place an order I mean, chip shortage is one thing, but then this production is not even ramped up on this model yet, so it's going to be a while. They hope to produce like 100 or 150 next year. To put that in perspective, they did 750,000 F-150s, I believe, last year, so they can do up to a million in a non-pandemic when they can actually get everything out the door kind of market. So it, it's the truck of the future. I hate to say it because obviously I'm a diehard gas cut the mufflers off make it go as fast as possible type of guy that's kind of what we do on this channel with most of our vehicles but this is sick it's fast i don't know how i'm going to deal with that range hopefully by the time we get ours the range will be extended on up further but it's going to be hard to get and for good reason it's an awesome vehicle we're going to go race the future versus the present this is sam's truck we're going to go do some pulls in this thing and see how these bad boys stack up if you want to see that video after we filmed it it's right here you can click on that now or down in the description and guys we'll catch you in the next one peace can't take him anywhere